Hello. Um, this week we are going uh, with uh, chapter two, uh, plastic hinge. We will continue with chapter two. Uh, in the previous week, we already learned about the plastic hinge length, and we um, already learned how to determine the plastic hinge length and, and the reason of the plastic hinge. And we also have learned how to determine uh, the full plastic moment of the section. So uh, to determine the fully plastic moment of a section, Firstly, we have to uh, determine the plastic neutron axis. <clears throat> and then we calculate F1 equal to F2. Then we calculate MP. The third one that we have learned about is design and uh, analysis using plastic design concept several uh, examples have already uh, explained and uh, the last one is the effect of the action force and shear force on the uh, plastic moment of a section has also been discussed about Today, first of all, we uh, are going to uh, um, see the effect of the combine between action force and shear force on the plastic moment of the section. So in the previous uh, class, we just consider the separate the effect of action force or shear force. But now, we are going to see how the combination of action force and shear force affect to the uh, plastic moment of the section. Okay. We, in uh, for a rectangular section, as you already know, the action force has some effect on the plastic moment, and due to the Last, uh, due to the action force, we have MPC. And MPC is a function of MP, which can be determined by using this equation. It is what we have learned in the previous week. And um, <clears throat> due to uh, shear force only, we have MPS. Do you remember the equation? Okay, no problems. I will show you. MPS is function of MP also, and can be calculated by using this equation, right? The function of MP and V and VP. And v is shear force, applies shear force, and VP is I will I will show you. Uh, or in the uh, approximate calculation we can use this equation okay and we can use its approximation of this equation here vp equal to b d multiplied by tau y and what is tau y tau y equal to sigma y divided by square root of three then We already have the equation for the, uh, the effect of action force or shear force separately. Now, the effect of the combination of action force and shear force, we have MPS now. 
can be determined by using this equation MPS over MP plus P over PY plus V over VP the power 4 and divide by this term equal to 1 okay so from now on you can use <clears throat> this equation in case of considering the effect of combination between action force and shear force okay so if you want to um, understand in detail you can check in the textbook for more detail otherwise you can uh, just remember this equation for the practical calculation and analysis this is approxima uh, approximation not um, exact solution but approximation okay so no problems for i section in i section due to p due to p right the uh, due to action force the um, <coughs> neutron um, plastic neutron exit is changed is moved not in the middle of a section but moved so the section can be uh, the um, the stress can be divided into two parts this term is due to moment this term is due to p action force then the action force in this case shifts a neutron axis okay neutron it shifts neutron axis <coughs> in action force how about in shear force due to the shear force the, um, <coughs> the stress in the web is reduced okay the stress in the flange is sigma y but due to the shear force tau equal to v divided by tw dw it is a thickness of the web, the web and it is uh, <coughs> the uh, you know, length of the web then due to the shear force the stress is reduced and the stretch in the web can be determined by using this equation it is vulnesis okay it is vulnesis condition so shear force reduce the magnitude of the stress in the web okay now, what is the effect of the combination between action force and shear force? Due to the action force and shear force, <clears throat> due to the action force, the neutron exit, plastic neutron exit is shifted, is moved. And due to the shear force, the strat in the web is reduced okay and combination will be like this it is stress diagram normal stress diagram in the section and it is shear stress diagram in the section <clears throat> okay now we have here is y yellow and y yellow you you can calculate you can determine y yellow you already know the equation if you don't uh, remember then like check please check in the previous um, lecture okay for y arrow how to determine y arrow <clears throat> and now the moment in the session equal to this force okay or this force okay multiply by the, the M length, it is M length, okay, the M length, the M length, then 
and plus the moment by the length okay by the flank then multiply by the m length is m length the f okay so we have to determine this area mean the force for example here is f1 then f1 equal to sigma multiply by um, tw multiply by <coughs> this dimension and this dimension is determined using depending on this m length and this m length can be determined by using this equation okay this one okay this m length so now we have mps equal to this term this term is moment due to length Okay, sigma y, b, t, f, and d, f. t, f is taken it up the flank, and d, f is the distance between the middle of the upper flank and lower flank. <coughs> and plus this term, and this term is the moment due to the wave. The sigma can be determined by using this equation. It is reduced stress due to shear force okay due to shear force okay so we have the moment of the section due to the combination of action force and shear force the next uh, next is the effect of local buckling effect of local buckling okay first how the local buckling effect to the the uh, the, uh, the strength of the section <clears throat> one of the as you know one of the biggest problems of steel structure is local buckling right because the section of the of the of the component is usually made of thin uh, place element right and the local buckling may occur in both flank or weft so it means sometimes local buckling may occur in the flank sometimes local buckling may occur in the weft so um, <clears throat> and uh, because of the local buckling, the section may not be able to obtain the value of full plastic moment. It means, for example, in a section we have uh, MP, the full plastic moment is here. Then due to the local buckling, the moment, the plastic moment is reduced, as you can see here. Maybe it's depend on the uh, um, the thickness, uh, the ratio between thickness and the uh, dimension of the section, and then we are going to talk about that in some next uh, slide. Okay. So, but uh, you remember that due to the local buckling, or in another word, lo local buckling reduced the plastic moment of the section. So uh, to avoid the local buckling or to avoid the, blast, uh, the redu reduction of plastic moment, we have to ensure that <clears throat> the local buckling is not uh, occur. So how to ensure proper compactness of the section? In uh, LRFD, it has defined two sets of limiting uh, width to thickness ratio. We have the ratio between um, uh, width to thickness equal to B divided by 
T B is the width of the section and T is the thick, uh, thickness of the section we have if this laser is equal to lambda P then it is compact section if this laser is <coughs> equal to lambda R then it's non-compact section okay let me um, explain more detail about the meaning of lambda p lambda r and what is compact section and what is non-compact section if lambda equal to p divided by t smaller than lambda p okay if this ratio is smaller than lambda p then we have compact section if lambda is greater than lambda p but smaller than lambda r then we have non-compact section okay non-compact section how about lambda is greater than lambda r if lambda this lambda is greater than lambda r then we have slender section what does it mean <clears throat> in compact section the section can obtain full plastic moment mp okay so in another word to obtain the plastic moment fully plastic moment the section should be a compact section okay a non-compact section can obtain any stress in compression element but not mp so in non-compact section m should be smaller than MP reduced due to the local buckling okay slender, sec uh, slender section may develop local buckling elastically okay buckling elastically it is inelastically it is local buckling elastically it means it cannot obtain neither eating stress nor full plastic moment okay so in design we try to avoid slender section and we try to ensure compact section okay try to ensure compact section <clears throat> So how to determine lambda p and lambda r? What is specific value of lambda p and lambda r? It's very simple. The value of lambda p and lambda r can be determined by using table 2.1 in the textbook, page uh, uh, 73. I realize that um, you may use a different uh, version of this book but if you use the same version of my book then you can find the table 2.2.2-1 uh, in textbook page uh, 73 you can check and it look like this the table <coughs> 2.1 it is limiting value of width to thickness ratio it means ratio between b uh, divided by t to avoid the pre premature uh, local buckling in this column it is type of element okay it depends on the type of element especially it depends on the unstiffened uh, stiffen, unstiffen or stiffen section okay it depends on unstiffen or stiffen section. What is stiffener or unstiffener? For example, for I section, this section, this part is unstiffen. Okay. But for the for the flange is unstiffen. But for the web, it is stiff section. So it depends on the uh, structure of the section or for example in the tube section like this <clears throat> okay so let's say this is still place still plate then this is stiff stiff 
section and some more <clears throat> some more uh, section you can see in uh, figure 2.21 in the book for more uh, uh, stiff or unstiffness section okay in this column and we have lambda p and lambda r lambda p and lambda r okay this column is lambda p if lambda is smaller than or equal to lambda p state in this table then the section is compact compact it means the section can be obtained fully plastic moment it depends on the <coughs> the structure of section for example for single uh, angles then we have no compact section but for non-compact section lambda r equal to uh, 76 divided by square root of fy and fy is a sigma y sometimes sigma y <coughs> uh, for example for stiff section then uh, for uniform thickness flanges of tubular uh, tubular section and flank cover place then we have lambda p equal to this one okay it depends on the section and fy and fy depending on the uh, steel type of steel okay then uh, lambda r lambda r equal to this one okay lambda r equal to this one and this column show uh, the value of k k mean k is a uh, buckling coefficient depending on the boundary condition okay it is buckling coefficient i will explain uh, later so in practical design <clears throat> when you design a section you have to ensure that to obtain the fully plastic moment you have to ensure that the section is compact section it means you have to determine lambda equal to p divided by t of each section for example a flank or for a web separately or for steep place of um, the, <clears throat> the component of the section then you, did, you have to determine every part of the section and compare to the value of lambda p it's described in this table if lambda smaller than or equal to lambda p it should be equal maybe or a little bit smaller than lambda p then the section is compact section and the compact section ensure that the section can be obtained can obtain the fully plastic moment okay so please remember uh, this um, <coughs> concept in the in, in the uh, uh, design or analysis procedure especially in design when you design a, a structure especially design a section not only check or calculate the strength of the section but also you have to check the compact condition of the section okay by determining the value of width to thickness ratio lambda equal to b divided by t of each part of the section and compare to uh, lambda p to ensure the compact section okay and, and, uh, and uh, in and uh, i'm going to show you more detail uh, the reason why we calculate lambda p and lambda r the meaning of this in the next step